Welcome to the A New You TV show. I am your host, Ivy Caldwell. And today I am continuing my interview with Vanessa Price. We had left off on where she did not want to tell her family about what she was going through due to uh, retaliation mm -hmm. or her family getting involved in her relationship in the wrong way. So welcome back, uh, Vanessa. We will continue with your story. All right. I am think I think there's one part in your book where you talked about when you were in the hospital mm -hmm. and because of your husband's condition mm -hmm. and you weren't really aware, you know, of your surroundings or what was going on. Mm -hmm. He came into the hospital to do what? Steal money from you. Yeah. 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 What did that feel like? Well, I'll tell you one instance. Um, I remember this particular time I had $20. <laughs> it's not funny. It's I have to laugh now because it's over with, but it's, it, that was an awful feeling, especially when you can't get up and you can't do anything. I had $20 in the drawer next to me. And um, that was a McDonald's. There is a McDonald's in the county hospital. And I said, would you take that $20 and go downstairs and get me um, a large order of fries? I really want some fries from the McDonald's. And he said, yeah, mm. I mean, stupid me, I guess. I hate to say that, but I just really thought he was going to bring them back. Mm. And I'm like, I have to this day to see those fries. Wow. <laughs> he never came back. The fries never came back. He took the money and went on about his business and did whatever he did with it. That was the end of that. And I'm in the hospital. You know, I just wanted some fries. Yes. Didn't yes, even do yes, that yes, for me. some French fries and you thought you could depend on him to go get them and yeah. bring them back. But he yeah. never came back. He never came back. He just took the money. Did he ever come back to the hospital to see you? Um, I can't remember at this time, at that point. I don't think he did at that time, but he did come back. Yeah, I think he did. I don't know if it was that time, but I know he was not allowed in the hospital at one time. Mm. Security, um, they did. I asked him not to come back to the hospital because I did call security yeah. and they watched him go out of the hospital, but he knows the hospital so well. Mm. He was able to sneak back in. And I happened to wake up one night and he was standing right over me, looking at me. That oh, was wow. so scary. That had to be scary. Oh, that was wow. so scary. Yeah. I woke up and he was just standing there in some dark glasses looking at me. Wow. You probably yeah. was like, what is he doing here? And what is he thinking about? Yes, just exactly. Wake up and see him looking exactly. at you like that. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And I, I remember, I do remember asking him, how did you get in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. All right. So how do you break free from an abusive relationship? Um, the only way I broke free was um, he finally left. I mean, as far as that, but um, I ended up, like I said, I stayed in the hospital those months or whatever, went to the nursing home. And what I did was when I finally got out, after a year later, because I was gone from home an entire year, um, when I got home, I made up my mind. I went downtown to the courthouse on my cane because I was, you know, became disabled. Mm. I got in my car by myself, went downtown to the county library and said, ask, how can I file for divorce? She said, you can actually write it up yourself. I said, are you serious? Mm. She said, yes. So she told me, you know, showed me how, gave me the paperwork and everything. I sit in the library, wrote up my own divorce papers, and he happened to be in jail again in another city. So you I went had, to the library to find out how mm -hmm. to get the divorce. And she tells you, you can write did. up your own uh -huh. divorce papers. Uh -huh. wow. I did it myself. I did it myself mm -hmm. all in one day. I did everything. I did it. 
And then I had him uh, served. I looked up the paperwork. I looked at where he was served in another city. I called that sheriff's office. They told me what to do, who to send it to. They gave me the address where he is, where he was at that time. Mm. I uh, had it served there, had it uh, certified. And the funny part was, uh, I, I said to myself, I said, they're going to call him down from his cell. And he's going to think that it's a lawyer for something else. And what's going to be funny is he's going to be getting served. Wow. Because he was in jail at that point? He was in jail. Wow. And, and he called me and he said, you just did the wrong thing. I said, no, buddy. Mm. I just did the right thing. Mm. And I'm free now. Jesus. Yes, I did. Mm, so you had enough at that point. I had yes. enough. I had enough. Yeah, it was time to move on. Yeah. yeah. Because you still I, had to recuperate from being I had to the recuperate. hospital yes. for over a year. A year. And I could not carry that on. I couldn't recuperate with that being um, married to someone like that because I didn't know what he was going to tr continue to try to do while I was recuperating. Yeah. And I had to be free. Yes, yes, yes. Now, do you think like the stress of your marriage attributed it to some of your sickness? I think it had to do with a lot of my sickness. Okay. okay. Yes. Because I also, I never had to take high blood pressure medication until mm -hmm. I was in that marriage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. keeping all of that like locked up and bottled on the inside of you. Yes. Wow. Jesus. Yes. Like this slowly eating up the insides. Mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. Mm. yes. Well, I thank God that uh, you are healed on today and that yes. you are free from that abusive marriage and you're moving yes. on in your life to greater yes. and better. I thank, thank God, God for continuously restoring your health yes. and renewing your strength in the Lord. Uh, and I like to go ahead. I like I like to say I still have issues today. I still have uh, recuperating from neuropathy, and I still have balance issues. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I don't let that get me down. Yeah, yeah. Because I could I could have the things that I have come through. I have conquered so much, and I smile today because I'm alive, and yes. God has kept me. Yes. You no, know? and that's what I am thankful for. Yes. I am so thankful because I could have been dead. Yes. And yeah, 13 you, years later, I'm still here. Yes. You put that in your book, regardless of the pain that I felt. Yeah. I smile through yes. it all. Yes. Yeah. I'm in pain every single day. Every mm -hmm. single day that I wake up, I'm in pain, mm -hmm. but I don't let that get me down. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Because the God I serve is a deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because sometimes like when we're going through or in our bodies are breaking down and when you're in that pain every day, we can begin yes. to confess that yes. negativity. Like, oh, yes. this hurt, that hurt. Exactly. But no, you got to speak the life to yourself mm -hmm. and keep mm -hmm. that positive attitude to exactly. endure that trial. Mm -hmm. Because God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He will get us through and keep us while we're going through those difficult situations. Amen. Now, how do you know, like when you're writing your book or your chapters, that you are healed when you're writing? Um, because I start to, um, I start to feel better when I'm writing, I'm getting it out. Mm. Um, I start to feel refreshed. I started to feel refreshed. Again, when I, when, before I started writing, I was afraid. Mm. When I started to put it on paper and actually see it, mm. I'm like, wow, this is a lot. This is a lot. And as I continued to write and began to see it come out, mm -hmm. and then when it came out in the book and I saw the manuscript, I'm like, I'm getting free. I'm becoming free. Mm. And being able to share this with somebody. Yes. That's when I knew I was breaking free and letting go. Yeah. And I was going to be able to help somebody else. Yes, man. So from yeah. fear to the refreshing, and then you're yeah. getting the renewed strength. Yes. And now my story 
is going to help someone else. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. yes. It's amazing how, you know, we like to hide things, mm-hmm. but we can't be free if That's we right. continue to hide it. That's right. It's like we got to open it up. We got to testify, in other words. That's right. You got to tell your story, tell, give your testimony mm-hmm. of the great things God has done for you. It wasn't great going through it, mm-hmm. but because I'm on the other side of it yeah. Yeah. and I'm sharing my testimony, what God has done for me, that's where that healing comes in. And that's where that freedom comes in. And you no longer have that fear. That's right. And you know what, Ivy? You get a lot more support and you get doors. A lot more doors will open for you when you share mm. and let go. Yes, that's it. Letting go of it. That's yeah. how you let go of it by yeah. putting it out there. Yeah. But as long as we hold it close to us, oh, yeah. I, I can't tell nobody this. Yeah. You can't be free. You can't be healed. You that's can't so be true. made whole. That is so but true. freedom is available, but yeah. we have to open up our mouths. It's mm-hmm. like giving that praise, give yes. that praise mm-hmm. report. God did this for me. He can certainly do it for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus, we serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. What would you say to someone that is in that situation right now? They may be going through the sicknesses in the hospital for a prolonged period of times. But then on top of that, your marriage has fallen apart. What would you say to someone that is watching, tuning in right now to help them? I would tell you, first of all, you need to give it to God. You need to trust God and know that God is in control of your life. He's in control of everything. Even if you feel like all hope is gone, all hope is really not all gone. God can deliver you. He can heal you and he can set you free. All you have to do is put your trust in him. Have faith as little as a mustard seed. Mm. That's all. That's all. Just give it to God. I trust me. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And in the front of your chapter, you put, do not procrastinate. Yes. Overlook what's important or feel like you have to stay in that bad situation. Yes. If you think like about that. what others are going to say about us, but they don't know the full story of what you're going through mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. That is powerful. It's like you got to get up and do something for you. That's right. To help you before you do lose your mind That's by right. staying in that situation. Mm-hmm. Jesus, mm-hmm. Jesus, Jesus. Only you can change yourself. Yeah, only you can change your situation. Yeah. Yes, yes. After all you have been through, you Mm -hmm. definitely are a new you. That's right. You are a new woman. A woman walking in freedom and purpose. Mm -hmm. And to God be the glory. Yes, yes. When you hear these four words, what comes to mind for you? Refined, refreshed, renewed, and restored. Start with refined. Okay. Refined. I am all new. Refreshed. I am just clean, Mm. totally clean of everything. All the old is gone away. Mm. I am a new person. Mm. And that next word is renewed. Renew. I have a new mind. I no longer think like I used to. Amen. Amen. No longer think like I used to. Even when I felt like 
I may not be healed or this is not going to happen. I'm not going to get out of this situation. I don't even put myself in situations like that anymore. Mm. I don't allow it. I don't even address it. I don't entertain those situations. Yes. Amen. And the last word is restored. God has restored me. He has restored me. I was dying to live. Mm. Now I am alive and I am free. Jesus. Yes, you are. And I'm telling you, just a beautiful woman. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. What is next for Vanessa? What projects do you have in the works? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> well, right now, um, again, I am in school, working on my second year in doctoral school, working in communications. I am, I do have a TV show that just uh, launched the other day. You're worth the price because you are worth the price. Uh, You can tune in on Thursday nights at nine o'clock central standard time. Um, I do have a book that I am working on. Um, I won't release the name right now, but it is in the, in the process. And let's see, um, um, working on jury. I do sell jury, paparazzi consultant, and I am a um, co-author again of Breaking the Code of Silence. And I do have another book that I've co-authored, which is The Uncommon Woman, mm-hmm. which talks a little bit about uh, me growing up uh, in a holiness church, mm-hmm. uh, being set free from some things there, traditions uh, The you know, um, if you're familiar with the holiness church, a lot of times, um, you couldn't wear makeup, you couldn't wear pants, you couldn't do certain things or whatever, but yeah. God is not a strict God and he doesn't look at all of that. He looks at your heart. Amen. So I talk about that in my book. Mm. So yes. those are some things that I'm working on right now. So, so, the, book, so the book that you're working on where you're not going to release the title right now, is that about your story? Well, it's kind of, no, I'll go ahead and release it. You don't have to. No, no, no. You don't have to. I just want to know what we have in store, you know, that's coming for it. It's more about ministry. It's more about sitting on things and things that you're not doing and should be doing. I don't mind releasing. I'll go ahead and release it. Um, it's re- really, I don't mind. Okay. It's It's more about ministry and it's about things that you should be doing when God gives you something to do and you're just letting it slide. The mm. name of the book that I'm working on is called anointed and deactivated oh jesus okay anointed and deactivated you heard it yeah. here first anointed <laughs> and deactivated yeah you there shouldn't are be a lot of people it. in the body of christ like that though mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. have gifts and callings and they are not using just sitting them. on it yeah yeah yes yeah so that's my next project all right awesome so that's going to be a good book <laughs> guys keep an eye out for that um how can the people get into contact with you okay i have a website it's called you're worth the price it's like my show it's y-o-u-r-e worth w-o-r-t-h-t-h-e price you're worth the price dot com you're worth the price.com. You can reach me there. There you can purchase my books. I also do coaching occasionally. And um, that's where you find my information. So check it out. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, Vanessa, I thank you uh, for being on the show. You have a powerful testimony. You definitely have endured a lot physically mentally and emotionally thank you and financially <laughs> right you. financially because yes. you lost your home i did i did you were in the hospital i did i lived in a very nice neighborhood very nice cars and i lost everything my ex-husband used to pawn my cars i'd have to try to get a taxi cab to work or uber or whatever mm. or either i'd be sitting at work waiting for him to pick me up i'd get off at three o'clock and he wouldn't pick me up until six and my my staff i was a manager and they'd like miss price you, you still here at work your ride hadn't come yet mm. or do you have a way home no i don't have a way home 
So God has really brought me through. <laughs> yes, and God has restored you, definitely. Yes. He has restored uh, your health. We continue to believe God for your healing. Yes, thank because you. God is a healer. And yes. what you don't know, I, I met Vanessa this, was it this year? Last mm-hmm. year, I met Vanessa. We were in a, a coaching program together. Yes, I met yeah. Vanessa last, last year. Mm-hmm. Vanessa has a funny side as well. <laughs> she likes to tell jokes. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm telling you, sometimes I can look at my phone. I'm like, this lady. I'm like, oh, my God. I just bust out laughing. She is too funny. And I keep telling her she missed her calling. She's a comedian. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to one day on her TV show. And she's going to have like a comedian episode <laughs> and i'm telling you we'll you're see. going to love it you're going to love it because she enjoys laughing i do i and do. enjoy smiling and making others to feel good <laughs> um, any final words as we come to a close uh with this episode <laughs> no again I, all i can just say is my motto is remember that you are worth the price amen amen So we thank you once again for being on the show and audience. You keep a lookout for her TV show as well. You're worth the price. Go to her websites, grab a copy of her book. uh, That will uh, uh, be a blessing to you. Or maybe, you know, someone who's in that situation right now, go to her website and grab that book. And always remember, no matter what you are going through in life, you can become a new you if you want to, but you're going to have to do the work to get on the other side of it and walk in a newness until next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hello. How are you doing on today? I am Ivy Caldwell, author of Expose It. Let your healing process begin. My book is here. It is here. Expose it. Make sure you grab your copy of it. I'm going to share the uh, titles with you that are in the book. Long-awaited release. Expose it. Let your healing process begin. In this book, I am sharing my personal testimony about some things I experienced as a little girl between the ages of 9 and 11. This book will bless your life, bless anyone that you sow into their life, So I'm talking about our enemy in chapter one. We all have an enemy. And we think it's those people that we uh, come into contact with, our family members or friends or anyone that may have hurt us. But that's not our true enemy. Chapter two, a surprise. I got a surprise on my ninth birthday. And you know what? It changed my life. You got to get the book to find out what it is. Chapter 3, I'm talking about another kind of encounter. Something that I experienced as a child. Something you would think that would never happen. But unfortunately, it does happen today more than ever. Chapter 4, I'm talking about the move. We all move sometimes from one home to another. So I'm sharing... What happened during my move? Chapter 5, Fearful. Have you ever been fearful about something? Sure you have. I definitely have. I am not the only one. But something was going on in the side of my home that made me fearful. Chapter 6, Family Secrets. Do you have any of those? Reveal them. Family secrets lead to generational curses. Stop hiding it. Reveal it. Tell the truth. Expose it and let your healing process begin. Chapter 7, The Bait. What is the bait? Hmm, something to ponder. The bait. Chapter 8 fatherless. Now, I know I am not the only one who did not have their father in their life. 
but having your father in or out of your life makes a big difference in how you turn out. So I'm talking about being fatherless. Chapter 9, love starved to true love. In chapter 9, I'm talking about looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> chapter 10, forgiven to forgive. I have been forgiven. Why? So I can give forgiveness. Chapter 11, Pain, Passion, and Purpose. I'm talking about how do you turn all of that pain that you have gone through in life into a purpose to help others. That's it. Those are my chapters, but you have to uh, grab this book. In order to find out what is on the inside of these pages, you can get this book on Amazon, paperback, or ebook, or you can go to my website, Footprint Enterprises LLC.com, and I will be so glad to send you an autographed copy with some gifts. The book is $19.99 plus $4.99 for shipping and handling, which is a total of $24.98. I am Ivy Caldwell, the author of Expose It, and I would love for you to support me. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me today in watching the A New You TV show. Be sure to check out my website for available products, services, my coaching program, or to make a donation to support the ministry. Tune in next week, Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next show. How can you become a new you? Continue your refining process no matter how hard it gets because your refreshing is on the way. You will be renewed as the eagle's wings and God is ready to restore you to the place he has just for you. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what the naysayers say, I want you to know that God is going to turn that thing around for your good. Hold your head up. Keep moving forward. Keep the faith. Don't you dare give up on yourself. And quitting is not an option. Why? Because you are on your way to becoming a new you. Have an awesome day and see you next time. Bye-bye.